After some parking bother, we have landed in Red, our latest forgotten town, which is in the midst of some affair. Redruth, Cornwall, population 21,083, rank number 505. I quite like the parping aspect of the tune. Whilst rival here to find the town in its midsummer pomp, soundtracked by a honking barrel organ, is a bonus. Today's tour guide, Chris, who grew up hereabouts, suggests this experience may be atypical. But the Buildings of England Cornish volume preempts our lazy categorization of Redruth as a tedious modern functional outpost. 20th century development provides an unprepossessing setting for one of the county's most singular historic towns, it tells us, going on to outline its medieval mining dominance, being followed by an unlikely 18th and 19th century renaissance moulded in the image of dominant architect James Hicks. But as we progress down 4th Street, among the smiling faces, diverse musical outpouring, and elongated articulation of the natives, it's difficult to think of this place being anything other than lively. I quite like this place. I don't know why anybody's got a downer on it. Yeah. They're just one superannuated fellow on a drop track. Whilst he strums his guitar. The clock tower is indisputably the centrepiece of town, visible at every turn like a Cornish version of the Palazzo Vecchio. And now it's partly phone repairs and a partly some slightly run-down bedsits. Red Ruth Town Market this way, every Saturday from 10 a.m. They're showing slightly more originality in their cover version. Still work in progress, yeah. isn't it? A lot of work going on here. Open September. Is that right? Yeah. Fantastic. There's quite a lot left to happen between now and September, isn't there? Ooh, can we have a look? Thank you. So this side is all sort of kitchens. This is a small coffee shop. So you have a kind of variety of units yeah, in there. Yeah, six food units in total. Yeah. So we've got a bar here, again, run by Red Youth Revival, and the mining exchange building. Yeah. There. And then I the could... butter market. Lovely big window so that you can see over the dining hall. We've got our beautiful reclaimed bricks which were from a chimney taken down in Lana some years ago, buried under loads of brambles and gorse. So what was this space used for? Well, it was all related to the mining industry. The mining exchange itself wasn't used for actually very long for this mining exchange. It was built in the late 1800s, but it was only used 10, 15 years. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. So we've got a big launch of Plastic Festival. Remind me what dates? It's the 22nd of September. Right. So who's funded all of it? So most of it is Heritage Lottery Fund. So next time it comes that bar will be open. See you for a pint. Of yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so look forward to it. Thank you very much for your time. Cheerio. the kind of thing people need to know. It's what the town cry should be telling them about. While we take a detour around the bottom of town, somehow resisting the temptation to ride on the slightly underwhelming Ferris wheel, there is time to fill in the factual shortfall. As we've heard, the town was the de facto hub for the tin mining area which surrounded it for many years, but the growth in peripheral service industries meant that it was affected less badly by the decline in mining, as was the case for other towns. Today's evidence suggests there were more banks than one could possibly have shaken a stick at, even if many have now been converted for other purposes, now followed by the market building. And it's possibly not surprising that as a local outlet for the arts, this town has given us such luminaries as actor Kristen Scott Thomas, funny man Rory McGrath, tall drummer Mick Fleetwood, and mind-melting musician Aphex Twin. Join me next time in Come On. Get down, get down.